Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the sum of the square roots of the roots or the solutions of a cubic equation. So m, n, and k are solutions to this cubic and we're supposed to evaluate the sum of their square roots. And I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So basically we're going to be using Vieta's formulas and just a quick reminder if you are using Vieta's formulas in a cubic equation like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, then those are given by if the roots are m and k, then you can basically say that the sum of the roots is negative b over a, the two-way products mn, mk, and nk as a sum is going to be c over a, and the product of the root which is m and k is given by negative d over a. Notice that you start with negative b and then the sign alternates. So you're kind of going from uh, b to c, c to d, and then so on and so forth to the next coefficient. But you always divide by a, okay? So that's what we're going to use. Let's see how we can use it. First of all, if they asked us for the sum of the roots, that's easy. But they're asking for the sum of the square roots. And the cool thing about Vieta's formulas is you, find, you can find the sum and the product and all the other relationships without solving the equation. And guess what? Some equations you can't even solve. So this is important. So let's go ahead and set this sum equal to something. How about r for radical? Okay, since this is a sum of radicals. Let's go ahead and square both sides. We have three terms, so that's a trinomial. If you square each one m and k and then plus two times then you're going to be basically multiplying these two at a time and of course they're under the radicals and that's going to equal r squared remember we're trying to solve for r okay what is m plus n plus k now remember our equation is written in the complete like full uh, cubic form right if you kind of write it as a complete cubic it's going to look like this, x cubed minus 3x minus 2 equals 0. And then notice that the x squared is missing, which means b is 0, c is negative 3, and d is negative 2. You have to consider those while evaluating these expressions, right? Since b is 0, the sum is also going to be 0 because it's 0 over a, and a cannot be 0, obviously. So this is 0. Nice. From here, we get something super duper nice. And that is 2 times this equals r squared. But let's go ahead and call this something. How about s for sum? <laughs> okay, so we get, first of all, let's write down what s is because later on we're going to have to refer to it. So this is called s. And we now know that 2s is equal to r squared. Nice. That's going to be our first relationship. Remember, we're, try to, we're trying to solve for r. The next thing we're going to do is we'll take s and square both sides. Why? Because we, kind of, we don't have an expression for this, we need to find one. So let's go ahead and square both sides here, just like before. And that's going to give us, again, mn plus mk. We're squaring the abc, and then the 2 times ab, ac, bc stuff. So take the 2 out. And now, here's what happens when you multiply these two things, right? You get m times the square root of nk. So that's going to be the general pattern inside the parentheses. You're going to have one of the roots times the square root of the product of the other two. Make sense? And then it's going to be n with square root of mk and then k with square root of mn. Get the idea? And this is equal to s squared. Let's just remember that, right? That's important to know because we're going to have to refer to uh, s uh, later on to find r. So let's go ahead and move this a little bit to the left so we can write it or set it equal to. What was that? s squared, right? Yes. Okay. Now we do have an expression for this. Remember, it is a two-way product, which is c over a, and c is negative 3, so it's negative 3. So this is equal to negative 3, and this expression right here, do you know what that is equal to? We don't, but we can find it, because you can factor square root of m and k, and inside, you're going to find square root of m plus the square root of n, uh oh, Notability acting weird again, square root of n plus the square root of k. So, and there's a 2 in front of it, and there's a plus sign. So, in other words, we get negative 3 here 
plus this equals s squared. Great. But guess what? This is the same thing as r. Remember, that's what we called r at the beginning, right? And this is just a product. And product is negative d over a. d is negative 2. Negative d is positive 2. So this is going to be a positive 2. With the radical, it's going to be square root of 2. Make sense? So far, so good. Okay, let's write this down in simplest form. Negative 3 plus 2 root 2 multiplied by r equals s squared. And that's going to be our second equation. Now consider 1 and 2 together. Let me go ahead and copy 1 over here. 2s equals r squared. That's equation number 1. And this top one is equation number 2. So what do you do? It's a system of equations. Come on. You probably know what to do, right? We're going to solve it. How do you solve it? The easiest way, and since we're looking for r, would be substitution. Let's go ahead and isolate s from the second equation. Write it as r squared over 2. And then we're going to substitute that here. Ready? Negative 3 plus 2 root 2r equals s squared, which is r squared over 2 quantity squared. If you square this, you're going to get a quartic, but that's okay. r to the fourth divided by 4 equals negative 3 plus 2 root 2r. Multiply both sides by 4. r to the fourth equals negative 12 plus 8 root 2r. And now to get a full quartic, let's put everything on the same side. Notice that this is a depressed quartic. It's very depressed because it's missing r cubed. And also r squared, which is very nice, right? So obviously there's a couple different things you can do about it. First of all, you can try to solve this equation with, I forgot the name of the method, but a lot of times they, it's been shared on my channel, uh, Nadia Fan, especially, uh, you know, talks about it all the time. It's a beautiful method, which starts by isolating the fourth power and then adding something to both sides to make uh, it a perfect square. And of course, that means the right hand side is also a perfect square, uh, whose discriminant you can set equal to zero. Get the idea? So it kind of looks like this. Isolate r to the fourth. We might as well just keep it there, right? Obviously, I didn't know. Uh, anyways, now we're going to be adding something super special, and that's going to be 2k r squared plus k squared. So that's what we're adding to both sides. Okay, that's what we're adding. So when you add that on the right-hand side, it's going to be 2k r squared plus 8 root 2r. I wanted to put the r squared and r back to back. And then this is a constant with respect to r. It's going to be k squared minus 12. Awesome. Now, notice that the left-hand side can be written as r squared plus k squared, which means that's a perfect square. Same thing has to go for the right-hand side. How can this be a perfect square? Well, it needs to be something squared. And that just means, by the way, I forgot to write r here. Let me add that real quick. And now, in order for this to have a... In order for this to become a perfect square, it needs to have a zero discriminant. So what is the discriminant on the right-hand side? b squared minus 4ac. c is k squared minus 12, and this set it equal to zero. If you square 8 root 2, you're going to get 64 times 2, which is 128. And then minus 8k times k squared minus 12 equals zero. And notice that we can isolate this to make it a little easier. 8k times k squared minus 12 is equal to 128. We can even simplify this because 8 goes into 128 16 times, right? And that gives us something like this. k cubed minus 12k is equal to 16. Guess what? From a cortic, we got a cubic, which we can hopefully solve. How do you solve this cubic? Well, probably... You'd, I don't think you want to use the cubic formula. You could if you wanted. That's one way to do it. Another way to approach it is basically using the rational root theorem, right? By the way, if there are only, this is only going to work if there are rational roots. Let's go back. I can leave it at that. And I just want to come back to the cortic because I'll show you an alternative method. Ready? We have r to the fourth, which is kind of cool, minus 8 root 2r plus 12 equals 0. Now, I realize that this expression, based upon the numbers that we have, like 8 root 2 and the 12, I kind of want to write, and we have a fourth power, I want to split 12 into 16 minus 4. And again, you might be questioning, like, why is he doing that, right? Well, the reason for that is simple. 
I'm gonna put the four with the R to the fourth and 16 is gonna stay with eight root two R and then this will be factorable by grouping. Of course, it's kind of hard to see uh, at first if you are not familiar with these kinds of algebraic expressions, but this is factorable by difference of two squares. By the way, this part is a little tricky. You have to be very careful because you kind of need to take out eight root two, not just eight. And inside you're gonna find R minus, to get 16 you need eight times two, so you will put another root two there. And again, this is factorable by difference of two squares over the set of rationals, I mean irrationals, you know what I'm talking about, right? And then now we, we get a common factor, which allows us to take out r minus root two, and then the rest gives us a cubic equation. And that cubic is also factorable. Let me tell you what it is first. r cubed plus root two r squared plus two root two r minus six root two equals zero. Now from here we can immediately tell, oh, okay, r equals root two is gonna work. And r was what we were looking for, so the square root of m plus the square root of n plus the square root of a, which is the sum of the square roots of the solutions, is gonna equal square root of two. But is that the only solution? No, because we also have a cubic we have to solve, and I'm gonna leave that as an exercise because I still need to do the second method real quick, okay? And here's how the second method works, and I want you to compare our findings from the first to the second. You could do rational root theorem or something else, and you'll eventually find out that this is factorable, like how? I can kind of, I notice that x equals two is a solution as well as x equals negative one. Beautiful. Now I can kind of force this to be divisible by x plus one by making the following manipulation. And then you can also use long division by the way, you can divide by x plus one or x minus two. And this will be x squared times x plus one. And then the rest is actually x plus one times x plus two because that's gonna be x squared plus three x plus two uh, with the negation. And if you set it equal to zero, again, x plus one take out, you'll get x squared minus x minus two equals zero. And again, this is factorable, beautiful, beautiful, x minus two and x plus one. And obviously at the end, this is gonna give you x plus one squared times x minus two. So we have a repeated root. And from here, the solutions are gonna be like this, m equals negative one, n equals negative one, and maybe k equals two. The order doesn't matter because we're gonna be looking at a symmetric sum. And if you take their square roots and add them, do we get square root of two from here as before? I, in other words, do these two cancel out? That's a good question, and I'm gonna leave it as an exercise for you again. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.